Empowered and Unapologetic is part of the Practice of the Practice Podcast Network, a family of podcasts that change the world. To hear other podcasts like the Bomb Mom Podcast, Beta Male Revolution, or Imperfect Thriving, go to practiceofthepractice.com forward slash network. Have you ever thought, how did I manage to lose myself? Being a mom is so hard, especially when we're feeling stressed and disconnected. We exhaust ourselves trying to create this perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your marriage and your kids without the stress perfectionism brings. I am going to teach you how to identify who you are outside of all of the roles you play. Hi, I'm Veronica Cisneros. I'm a wife, mother of three, and a licensed marriage and family therapist. I am on a mission to teach women just like you how to become empowered and unapologetic. Welcome to our girl gang. Hey ladies, welcome to Empowered and Unapologetic. I'm your host, Veronica Cisneros. Today's guest is an exercise physiologist, wellness coach, and author of the bestseller, Boom, Six Steps to a Longer, Healthier Life. She helps women lose weight, gain energy, and stick to a home exercise plan that works for them. Her specialty area is small changes that deliver big results and key mindset shifts that motivate you to take valuable lifestyle changes right now. So please help me by welcoming my good friend, Kathy Richards. Hey, Kathy. Hey there. So good to be here. Oh my God. So we're finally doing this. Yes. It's so great. (laughs) So one of the main reasons why I have to admit something, I don't want to, and I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm all about vulnerability. (laughs) So one of the things that really inspired me and is still in my damn head, I had asked, I'm going to go into a little bit of a story. I had asked Kathy, I don't know what it is because I I know about, you know, shifting your mindset. I know about creating change. I know about like what steps it takes to create that change. I mean, hell, I do this for a living. For some reason, it's just not happening for me. And maybe it's because I'm running away due to work and I'm so busy. Kathy, what was your reply to me? Because she called me out like <laughs> straight up. Okay. Well, I don't know this applies to everybody, but I thought from the conversations we'd had, I knew what your problem was. And I said, Vero you're just, you just don't look bad enough yet. <laughs> what I said, I said, you're still beautiful and hot. Your husband's still totally into you. You don't really have to lose weight, right? You, know, you look you're good enough the way you are. <laughs> oh my God, Kathy. That's still there, especially when I'm stuffing my belly into my really tight jeans. <laughs> but you know what? When you said it, it was like, holy moly, she's, she's right. Like, I could, I could walk around here in my house, you know, in my room and I could look, I could just wake up. My hair is all nasty. And my husband's instant immediate response to that is damn. And it's like, dude, like, <laughs> he's See, letting me tuck that, in my belly. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so nice. But you know, one of the things that people need to, to really change your habits that we call it a personally compelling motivator. And if, if, you know, you just weren't compelled enough yet. No. So that was one of your things. But when you find that personally compelling motivator, magic can happen. So tell us more about that. Tell me about that compelling motivator. What well, am I yeah. missing? Well, there's two things. I think that the, the mindset stuff is is huge for, for getting back into fitness or sticking to a fitness routine. And it's a two-part thing. The first part is that it doesn't have to be all or none. Most of us are thinking, I need to go to the gym for a whole hour. I need to commit to something that's enormous, that is too overwhelming, and I really don't feel like doing it. So we think, oh, if I'm not going to do fill in the blank, really, anything that, that sounds too overwhelming, I might as well do nothing at all. Mm-hmm. But the truth is there are really meaningful benefits from even modest investments of time. So I like to tell my clients that, you know, more might be better than less. I mean, let's mm-hmm. be honest, that's true. But some is better than none. And some gets us on track. Some gets our, our started. And then it can grow and evolve over time. 
So, so that's the first thing is, is it, you know, kind of accepting and getting rid of that all or none mindset. And then the second part is finding that personally compelling motivator to kind of get into the mindset of, you know what, I can't afford not to. And, oh God, yes. you know, um, and I am, um, I'm a little older than you, Vera, you know, so I'm a little closer to seeing the changes of aging. My parents are starting to need help. I wrote Boom after working at a senior living community for eight years where the average age was 85. Yeah. So I ask, again, all my clients and all the public speaking I do, my key question is, what type of 85-year-old do you want to be? Oh, my gosh, Kathy. When you asked me that, I was like, well, a healthy one. And, <laughs> and then I started really thinking about, wait a minute. She's really asking me this question. What type of 85 do I want to be? And immediately, most of us go into, you know, we're retired, you know, um, and I don't want to say we're at the end of the road. However, for a good majority of the population, yeah, I think I'm going to live to be like 185. So I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but like, yeah, it, it, it hits us with the realization that we all have this expiration date. And I, what I'm doing right now is preparing me for whether or not I'm going to get closer to that expiration date sooner than later. Well, it's not just how long we live. It's the quality of those years as we're getting to be yeah. up to 85. So that's kind of what the point is of that is that um, when I ask that question, what type of 85 year old you want to be? I always follow it up with because you're working on it right now. You know, because it's our habits in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s that determine what type of 85-year-old you're going to be. So when I was there for eight years, surrounded by literally 1,400 people with the average age of 85 in retirement community, there yeah. were 85-year-olds who were traveling the world, who were doing Zumba, who were like leading these fantastic, really meaningful lives. And then there were some who were had the other end of the spectrum with significant cognitive and physical ailments, could barely get out of bed, were in the nursing home section. So which type of lifestyle do you want to be living at 85? Because it's not going to flip a switch at 84 or 83 where you become one or the other. It's the path you're on now. And the reason why I was so happy to talk to you and your listeners is because we don't have to do double duty. The same things that are going to make us live a vibrant, really awesome life at 85 are the things that are going to, at 35, give us have more energy, have us fit into mm -hmm. our skinny jeans better, have us, yeah. you know, look the way we want to look. So um, it's just... I use that angle to have another motivator to kind yeah. of, if, if today maybe the thought of, you know, my genes isn't motivating me enough that I like to lay on more and more motivators so that something is going to resonate and you really will accept that fact of, you know, I can't afford not to. You're, you're right. Like, you know, I'm 41. Oh my God. I can't believe I just said that. Okay. So I'm 41 and I am, I'm starting to see, you know, I'm not going to lie and see, say I'm seeing drastic changes. <clears throat> I haven't dyed my hair since Aubrey was, since I was pregnant from Aubrey. She's 13 wow. now. So I haven't dyed my hair in years. Don't get me wrong because I do pluck out gray hairs. I don't <laughs> care. I'm plucking them. They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> but I do start to see some changes. And those questions really did impact me in the way that, you know, I, I live my life. And we're all about eating healthy and organic food and, you know, working out. However, I did notice that I was starting to work out less and less. You know, I went from working out, you know, four days out of the week, five days out of the week, two, maybe once. Mm -hmm. And the type of, you know, I'm, I'm a therapist and I'm also a coach that requires me to sit down and listen. And, you know, a lot of it, with me being an entrepreneur is a lot of sitting down typing and doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. admin work, but all of it requires very, very little movement. Mm -hmm. And my trainer had asked me to purchase a watch to see how, like how many calories I'm burning. And I, I kid you not, I looked at my watch and it said I only did two minutes of exercise. <laughs> For the whole day. Oh gosh. <laughs> and that's, that was one of my, that was one of my busiest days. And this dang watch told me I only worked for two minutes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so it led me to, it led me to start really thinking about your question and 
what type of 85 year old do I want to be? And hell no, I want to be walking around 85 years old in a bikini or naked <laughs> in my bedroom. You know what I, mean? I, I still want, I'm going to have both and wrestling and everything inserted in me. And I still want to be able to rock it. And the only way I'm going to be able to rock it is if I adopt and change my lifestyle. So how are you a part of that, Kathy? How are you a part of helping women change this, their, their, their dysfunctional patterns? Well, you know, I, I focus mostly on helping women with home exercise programs that fit into their lifestyles. Oh, we need that right now. We, need, we do. We all need that right now. Because we're, especially COVID world or not, so many people find that exercising at home is more convenient than going somewhere else because you don't have the travel time. You don't have the, you know, any of the transition times you can just boom, get it done. See, boom. I say boom all the time. Yes. It just, it comes in handy. Um, and <laughs> in fact, that's why I named my book boom. Cause it's like, Hey, a wake up call. Hey, yes. get it done. Hey, you know, we really can just tackle this. So what I have designed in boom and also my course that's coming up in 2021 is a four level system where you can pick a minor, 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 you know, the bare minimum. You could do a little more, a little more, or the max. I have it like set up like a speedometer. So whatever level of commitment and amount of time you have, we can, do, you know, we have a program for that. We have an amount of exercise that will work for you that you can fit into your life and that you can get benefits from. So yeah. strength training is a huge part. I help women with strength training all the time because, you know, we're more comfortable with cardio. Most women know more about cardio and that's their go-to, but you know what? The changes really come from weight training. That, yeah. That's where the major changes in how we look, how, how strong we are. Back to the 85 year old thing, getting out of a chair. You're not going to be rocking a bikini if you can't get out of a chair, oh, you know? Wow. And what? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the shocking statistic is the average person loses half their leg strength by the time they're 85. Oh half. my gosh, I'm going to cry. So to me? <laughs> I know. So, but you know what? Guess what? It's not the physiological aging process. It's not. You can have the same leg strength in your 70s and 80s. It's because we gradually get less and less active. That's where the muscle loss comes from, not from the physiological aging process. In fact, 70% of how we age is due to our lifestyle. So we can change it. We can change the way we age by starting these habits now. So when I work with my clients and the people who are in my courses, um, we set up that weight training program and the cardio and the daily activity, just like your, uh, that your trainer asked you to do because we can exercise every day, but mm -hmm. if you're sitting down or lying down the other 23 hours of the day, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. So we need to look at daily activity, exercise, and then obviously there's the eating patterns too, kind of oh, mixed God. in. Mm -hmm. So um, my coaching clients, I look at the whole thing, mindset, you know, what are your goals? What are, how, how are we going to be able to put together a routine that really works for you long-term? Because so many of us try to do something overly strict yep. that we start and stop a million times rather than saying, hey, what can I start doing now that I can still see myself doing a year from now? Yep. Because that's where the benefits come. I like that you mentioned start and stop because that's huge. A lot of women that um, I coach, they all will tell me, well, it's just that motivation, Veronica, you know, that motivation to go ahead and do something different. I just don't have it. And what I'm realizing is it's no different from, you know, our motivation to go ahead and adapt, you know, to a different, um, healthier pattern. Mm -hmm. It's, we don't want to feel the pain. That's ultimately what this is. And we do go extreme. And because mm -hmm. we go extreme, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm trying to build momentum to speed race up this hill when I haven't worked out in like years. Well, that's not going to happen. And so I'm in that with disappointment. And I appreciate you saying that it's in stages. So yeah. What is it really with regards to needing motiva more motivation? What would you say is the reason? Well, you know, I tell people, and when I do my presentations, I have this, this slide with a puppy dog with his head down saying, you can wait a long time to get motivated. I mean, like if yeah. you're waiting to get motivated, it's hard to help you out there. So a lot of times it's the action that gets the momentum going. So that's mm -hmm. why starting small, just doing something, and then the action starts getting your mind on track. Yeah. So, um, and we can also use the phrasing, you know, there's motivation and then there's determination, like, or, you know, or discipline. Yeah. Like if you decide this is what I'm going to do, because this is just what I do. And there's not, then you don't attach that motivation. I mean, think of something you do in your daily life 
that you do just because you're an adult and it needs to happen. <laughs> it's yeah. just, you know, and it is what it is. And you don't put it in that category of needing to be motivated. I mean, let's just say I had a friend once, you know, when it was in the throes of children were young saying, I wish there was just a pill we could give them instead of dinner. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we have to feed our family. Yes, yeah. we can get carried out sometimes. Yes, you know, but, but in, when it comes down to it, we stop complaining about the things that are non-negotiable. Yeah. So I tend to teach my clients um, things that are um, take shortest amount of time that you don't need to feel motivated for. Like another one of my silly questions is, did you make time to brush your teeth this morning? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> like That's non-negotiable. That's non-negotiable. It fell into the non-negotiable category of your life. So um, how long did it take you? I don't know how long until my timer tells me. That's my, right. My toothbrush is in charge. It tells you, right? Yeah. About two minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. So what if I could teach you an exercise that takes the same amount of time, takes two minutes, and it'll help with strengthening your abs, giving yourself a better midsection, and also prevent and relieve back pain in two minutes Ooh. a day? Yes. Sign me up. Exactly. But we don't think that way. We think, oh, it's going to have to be this big old thing. But I like to to have little habits that I can teach uh, my clients and my students to link to other things they're already doing. And it just becomes part of your day. And there, thereby, you don't have to get motivated because it's just part of what you do. It's just yeah. linked to something else and we can just do it. I, I'm glad you said that. Here's why. Um, coming back, so I've gotten so in tune with work. You know, you and I are in the same course and that course is hell. It's great. <laughs> however, it's hell. I feel like I'm back in grad school. Um, so between running that business, running the second business, the podcast, you know, and then also um, taking this course, there's not enough hours in the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I started small. I was like, you know what? Okay, well, I'm just going to work two days out of the week and that's it. I'm not going to go out and work out anymore. Mm -hmm. Did it. And then I slowly moved up to three days. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm at four days and it's slowly building awesome. up that, right? It's slowly yes. up that like momentum. Mm -hmm. In the past though, there were so many times that it was like, all right, well, I'm going to work out six days out of the week. Yeah. I'm going to cut carbs. I'm going to cut sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to drink air. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is all that's happening. And I was always met with feeling frustrated. What would mm -hmm. you say is your client's biggest frustrations? I think the biggest frustration is that, that dejection that you get, like, oh, I failed again. Like, Bingo. Yes. You know, and then the more down on yourself, I mean, what, how are you going to comfort yourself? Not with a yeah. salad. I mean, that's not no. how I can remember myself. No, no. <laughs> I'm going to comfort myself with onion rings, <laughs> green enchiladas. I say this right. all the time. <laughs> and you say, oh, I just can't do it. You know, and then you keep kicking yourself and kicking yourself because you keep saying, if I only, if I start, if I start again tomorrow, then in this number of weeks, I, I can lose this number of pounds. And then we, we really get obsessed with this being strict and then we can't stick to it and then we fall off and then we start again and then we stop. And so, so the frustration just makes us feel down on ourselves. And when we're feeling down on ourselves, that's not setting us up for success either. So that's why we want to set ourselves up for these quick wins, set ourselves up for these things that are actually doable, that, that will give benefits and that will teach us just a little patience too. Um, because when we think about the phrase, you know, I just don't have time, which obviously yeah. that we all do have only a limited number of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. However, we have all been met with things that have been thrown in our lap that suddenly change our priorities, right? Where you yeah. suddenly, like all of a sudden you have, when you have a new baby, right? Suddenly you might have said to yourself, what did I ever do with my time before this? You know, like, I don't, I don't know what I ever all did. All these kids, yeah. You know, <laughs> or you suddenly, um, an ill spouse or suddenly a big work project, we reshuffle our priorities. So it's kind of like, um, like I, I, when I do my, I do a lot of talks in, in corporate wellness, you know, lunchtime seminars. So I'll say, okay, part of your wellness, let's say your company was going to give you a $5,000 bonus. If you exercise without fail three times a week for the next month, do you suddenly have time? Yep. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. You know, so it's just, it's not, it's never about time. Nothing that we, you know, nothing's ever about time. It's always about priorities and shifting priorities. Like, okay, and problem solving. So if we get rid of the all or none and slide, it's sliding up on the priority list. And then you, you reconfigure because your listeners are like badass women, right? I mean, that's, Amen. Cool. 
been yeah, there, are. right? It's okay. So, we can brag. <laughs> we brag here. It's all right. We should. So the whole point is anything we really want to do, we figure it out, mm-hmm. you know? So it's just getting to the point of what, what do we really want to do? And have we figured out that it doesn't have to be all or none? And then taking that baby steps, having the support. That's why I love my coaching clients. I love my accountability groups because knowing that someone's going to check back in with you kind of helps, especially in the beginning when the, when the habits are small, when they're, we're just trying to get going. That accountability is so important. So important. I'll go throughout my day and realize, holy crap, I went the end, I, you know what, it's two o'clock and I still haven't ate anything Mm -hmm. or, you know, I. I haven't even drank water like that is so bad because I get so caught up in work because right. that provides me instant validation, instant gratification. Mm-hmm. I got to mm-hmm. check that box because it's mm. done. What I've realized is I've also put myself last mm. and, you know, in doing that, my mood downhill, mm-hmm. you know, the way I feel mm-hmm. is downhill and I'm a lot, a lot, I'm quicker to be tired than anything else. Um, What would you recommend the listeners to go out and do when they're feeling all these ways? They don't have time. They're lacking motivation. They have kids, you know, and they maybe don't have the best eating habits right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I I would love to say, again, picking one or two things and starting small. So when it It goes back to that. It, it does go back to that. So mm-hmm. with, with my, with my clients, for instance, I'll be texting them. Like, well, like we have, like, we'll set three month goals. Like wh- where do we want to get? Like, first of all, we'll start with a vision. What do you want to do a year from now? Like, wh- where do you see yourself? And, and then we decide, okay, what are our three month goals that are more tangible to get there? And then we cycle it back to, Hey, what about this week? What are we going to do this week? And then it's, it's actionable. It's, it's small. It's reasonable. And then we, I'd be texting them. We'll be texting back and forth. Okay. How to go today? Hey, did you get your water? And Hey, did you get your workout? And you start feeling successful. And then the weeks string by. So I love to help my clients string the weeks together while they're making changes. So, you know, having that kind of accountability, even with a, a friend um, or even with your, with yourself, if you journal um, a whiteboard, I have a lot of my clients who we have whiteboard systems where we check things off. Um, so keeping it reasonable and small, but still kind of a little list perhaps. Um, and that weekly accountability can really help. I love that you said, you mentioned three months. So three, you, you have the year and you have three months. Mm-hmm. So the minute you said a year, I was like, Oh God, I don't know if I could do a year. You know, That's just I'm, a vision. I'm, right. What do, you want to be, what do you want to be a year from now? When you gave me three months, it was like, wait a minute change can happen in three months. I could lose weight in three months. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you another example. I, um, every now and then I say every now and then, because it's true. I'll put what I eat in that, my fitness pal. So I'll put what I eat there. Right. And then at the end of it, it'll tell you, it it had said to me, and I took a picture of it because I was like, Oh my God, is she for real? I know what it says. Right. It said, if you maintain this in five weeks, you'll be at you know, my my ideal weight. I got so excited. Kathy almost peed myself. I was like, what? Every day when you complete that, that log. And I have my clients use that that app mostly. If you click complete diary, it says if every day were like today in five weeks, you would weigh blank. So let's just say you had a really high calorie day and you were actually honest and input it all. (laughs) Cause like I say, if if we're having a bad day, I don't always input it. Right. So, but if you really input it, it will say in five weeks you'll weigh, and it could be like ten pounds higher if every day was like that. So, but you know if you're on track, if that number for what you'd be in five weeks is lower or higher, or maybe you're just trying to stay the same. Maybe that's you're using that as accountability tool just to maintain your weight. Maybe you're not interested in losing weight. So, in three months, what are the what can the listeners do right now? In three months, you can start a weight training routine that would help you get firmer. You can lose fat. You can gain more energy. You can, I mean, as far as weight loss, you've probably heard that about a pound, maybe two pounds a week is, is reasonable, but that also depends on just how strict you want to be with yourself. And that's a kind of a, a honest conversation you have with yourself too. And, and my fitness pal, that's why the apps will talk you through it. When, they, when you're yeah. deciding how many calories you have, it'll say, are you going to be aggressive with this? Or are you going to be middle of the road? Or are you just going to make a little, little tweaks to what you're eating? So um, but the, the, whether you're on a fast track or the slow and steady, 
you can make fat loss, you can get your muscle stronger, you can get your energy up. I have one client who her main goal was just to feel happier. She said, right now, I consider myself a one on a scale of one to 10 with how happy I am. And after just a couple of months, she said, she said, you know, Kathy, I was going to tell you I was a five, but you know what? I'm an eight. And oh, I love her. I know. I, I, you know, just so fantastic. Um, cause exercise does that for you. It's that they, they don't call it nature's antidepressant for nothing. You know, yeah. it's really it's so, so important. And to take that time for yourself, like you said, it's, it's true. Um, some of my clients, my, my clients, um, that see me as a therapist, I'll ask them to take a small walk, you know, even if it's mm-hmm. literally walking down their driveway and back up, walking in the mailbox and back, and then get to a place where they can walk around the, around the block. That does help with depression. So I'm so glad you oh, said yeah. that. Yeah. You mentioned something about quick wins and quick fixes. Can you tell me more about that? Well, the quick fix is something I can't promise you. That's what we, that's yeah. what the infomercials are trying to peddle us, right? The quick no. fix and get us you every know, time. I think get, <laughs> so you're smart enough now, right? Your listeners aren't oh, no, falling I know that for now. that anymore, right? So I'm, again, I, I know your listeners are too smart to fall for that quick fix. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is go for those quick wins that make us feel like, okay, I'm, I'm on the right track, getting those good endorphins going, feeling proud of yourself. So a quick win would be something like making the right choice, getting a side salad instead of the fries when you go out or you yeah. know, just the other drinking that water. One of the things I love to do is I do myself and I recommend for my clients is drink a whole darn full water bottle right when you wake up in the morning. So you're starting off the day with that increased hydration. I love that. That's a quick win. That's a quick win. You know, quick wins are actions. You know, a lot of times we tend to think about the goals that are outcome oriented. We have a little less control over, let's be honest. I mean, you know, there are so many factors that influence how quickly we lose weight or not. Some we can control and some we can't. Some we can measure and some that we can't. So Mm -hmm. when we are only using outcome related goals, you know, we might not get the reinforcement that we need, but when we are giving ourselves actionable goals, like, Hey, I'm successful. If I get that workout in three times this week, if I drink my water this morning, if I, you know, log my food, because we all know that when we actually log our food, we're going to eat healthier. Yeah. Ladies. (laughs) (laughs) You know, right now, when you said just drink a, a, what, a 32 ounce of water, like, I could totally do that. And and then right now it's like, well, wait a minute. I'm always on my kids about drinking water. (laughs) I can put a water next to everybody's bedside and boom, we all have a competition of who drank it first or did you drink Mm -hmm. your water? Oh my gosh. I love that idea. I'm totally doing it. Totally, totally doing it. You say another thing I want to get to. I'm going to ask you all the questions, girl, because I want to, mama needs to learn. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. Yes. All right. So can you tell us more about what you mean, never too early or never too late? All right. I love it. You know, that's the tagline of my business. And it's also the tagline of my book. And once again, it came from me working first in corporate wellness and then working with seniors. So Mm -hmm. never too early means start now. I mean, whatever age you are, if we start now, we can start aging as healthy as possible. We can start having the health, the vitality that we want now. And it's never too early. A lot of times people would say, oh, I'm too young for that. Or, oh, I'll worry about that when, you know, later. And they think, especially people who maybe are okay with their bodies. A lot of times we really, people still think exercise is only if you want to lose weight or healthy eating is only if you want to lose weight. And if you you feel like you look okay, then you just don't need to bother. Well, the health benefits of exercising are more than any other thing. I mean, there's more benefits to exercise and then almost any other single thing you can do. Yeah. So it's really, you know, affects everything under the sun about your body. And then the never too late is because after I was working with the 85 year olds, the really amazing motivating thing is that you can still make progress. You can still improve your strength. Your body still responds to exercise, Mm -hmm. even at 85 or 95. I've had clients who are in their nineties who I can put on a strength training program and they're lifting dumbbells. They're doing, leg strengthening exercises, and they might be using a walker and be able to graduate to only using a cane. Or they might be using a cane and then be able to walk unassisted. So it's never too, it's never too late. You can still get the benefits. I want to do my 10th walk when I'm 90. There you go. (laughs) So, I mean, I love, and also I 
that's the tagline of my book and my business because I like the generations working together. I want us yeah. to help our, our parents, our grandparents. I want us to help our children and mm-hmm. that we're more successful when we approach this in community and with our loved ones. So is all of this information in your book? Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really a, a motivation guide. And then also has all the, the workouts, all the levels it has. Um, it has a whole never too early track for workouts and it has a whole track for never too late workouts as well. Oh my gosh. So there's a full track system in there. Four, that we four can levels. Right away. That's right. Four levels. You pick your level and it, it just a, most people, um, you can do some of the routines that are so simple that it doesn't require any equipment at all. And then there's one level up that you might want exercise tubing or a ball or some dumbbells. So it depends on it, whatever level you want, guide you through making that decision of what level is right for you. I love, I know I say I love this, but I do. I, I'm just being like, oh my God, this is so cool. The reason why is because right now with all of us, you know, being in quarantine and not in quarantine and then back in quarantine, um, we all do need something. And a lot of us shy away from starting a new healthy regimen because we don't know. We don't know how to start. Right. And we don't know what guides to use. And I don't want to feel mm-hmm. like a moron trying to do this one donkey kick or, you know, <laughs> this burpee or whatever. And so right. if I have a guide and it's, it's right there at home exercises and I could just follow that. And not feel Absolutely. So it comes changed. with videos. Oh yeah. There's, I mean, when, when people who have the book, there's a website that uh, free download, you get all, access to all the videos too. So oh my um, gosh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I got to ask you two final questions. My first one is what are you personally doing right now to live the life you want to live? Well, gosh, well, I, you know, I, the thing that I'm doing right now, two things. Number one is I am taking, I'm taking a course to launch a course because I always believe in increasing my, um, mm-hmm. you know, my dreams of becoming either more educated or expanding my business. I love growing my business. So that's what's living my dream right now is my, my dream to grow my business. Um, and the other thing I will be honest, I, I mean, I won't say exercise because to me, that's a given. All my <laughs> healthy habits are just part of my life, but I am with my parents a lot. So oh. my parents need care. And between my siblings and I, we rotate days up there. And um, that's what I, I love to do, be there for my parents. They were there for us. And so um, they need the help. And so, um, so that's living the life I want to right now. I love that. My yeah. kids and my parents. Mm-hmm. My last question is, what advice, in one sentence, what advice would you give to the mom who feels stressed and disconnected? Give yourself a hug and don't be so hard on yourself. Yep. All right. So I know you have a free giveaway. Oh, yeah. You're giving it just for our guests. Tell me how we can get it. Or what is it? Well, you know, it's at first you go to kathyrichards.net, Kathy is with a C, and forward slash free. So that's nice yep. and easy to remember, kathyrichards.net slash free. And on there, you will find some downloads that have to do with um, the superfoods. And there is something about brain power there. There's a, a little mini course on uh, get back on track in a weekend. Yay. And I think I loaded one more thing on for your group. I think it had to do with, oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's escaping me. Um, but I, I think I loaded three or four awesome things related to- You hit uh, that lady, you gotta go on her website. And get yeah, all- yeah, download it. it could all, and that, that way also um, you'll be, you'll hear about when my course is ready because I'm gonna be doing a free masterclass in January about how to you know kick off your 2021 fitness goals. So it's a free masterclass. I'd love to have uh, your listeners come in and join me on that in January. Absolutely. And where can we find you? Well, it's kathyrichards.net is my website, but how about Instagram, Facebook? You can find me at Inspiring Vitality. So at Inspiring Vitality is me on Instagram and on Facebook. Awesome. And then we'll get a link. We'll make sure to put um, a link for your book on our show notes too. Yeah, that'd be great. Kathy, this has been amazing. I've learned so much about myself and I'm going to be doing my pimp block at 90 years old. Love (laughs) it. I want pictures of that. (laughs) Thank you so much for being on the show, Kathy. You're welcome. It's been great being here. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, 
please go to iTunes right now and rate and review. Thank you, guys. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I know you're ready for the next steps. If you want to become empowered and unapologetic, get my free course, Unapologetically Me, over at empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash course. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host, practice of the practice, or the guests are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. I'm Madeline, and I'm the host of the Happiest Sober podcast. I got sober in my 20s after a decade of gray area drinking, and the greatest plot twist of all time was realizing that alcohol, the thing that I thought made my life the most happy and fun and exciting, was actually the exact thing preventing me from living my happiest and best life. My mom is 40 years sober, and she joins me on my podcast very often. I like to call her my part-time co-host, and I also bring you solo episodes where I share my top tips, tricks, and mindset shifts in sobriety, and lots of how-tos for navigating all the things sober, from weddings to parties to holidays to bachelorette parties to trips. I'm also joined by so many guests who come on and share their sober stories, and they're all so, so inspiring. I'm here to show you that life doesn't end when you quit drinking. In fact, it's very much the opposite. And no matter what your relationship was with alcohol, life can be the absolute happiest when you're sober. New episodes come out every Tuesday. You can listen to Happiest Sober Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.